So good morning and welcome to Monkhouse on Mondays. Today we have Andy King with us and is the CEO of Link for Life and he's also a member or Link for Life is of GM Active. Good morning Andy, how are you today? Good morning Dave, I'm very well thank you, nice sunny day. It is, it's lovely isn't it? I, I, I tend to do these recordings in the morning because the sunlight makes my face look much browner than it actually really is. <laughs> Um, so thank you for joining me at this time. Um, and of course, physical activity. We're all told by the chief medical officer that we should all be doing stuff. So what are you doing to stay fit and active at the moment, Andy? Um, I'm, I've got a wife who's a very good triathlete, a sort of long distance triathlete and two lads who are rugby players, Dave. So so I've got a garage full of weights and a, um, a watt bike with Zwift on it. So I'm a bit of a Zwift right. convert. convert. Oh, okay. I'm not very good at it. I'm in the D category, right. if that means anything to anybody. And I'm right at the back. Um, yeah. give us a wave if you if you cycle by me but um, so so i'm doing that and uh, really enjoying it to be honest um yeah so that, that's what i'm doing and trying to keep up my two lads on the weights and failing the excellent degree. fantastic because i was going to congratulate you on that iron man certificate or plaque in the background but if it's yours, <laughs> i'm not going to do that so uh, uh, well i i've done one um but that's a long story i did it and i thought i'd finish but i hadn't um it's a long story i won't bore you with it now <laughs> We'll do that some other time, Andy, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah. So, Andy, I, I'm just just give us some insight. What is it that you guys do at Link for Life and, and what's the GM Active connection? Yeah, OK, so so Link, Link for Life, we, we operate all the leisure centres and the cultural venues, um, which is more and more unusual uh, for the Rochdale Borough Council. And um, so we're doing that uh, for a number of years and that and, and uh, quite successfully. And our sort of USP at Link for Life is where we try and combine the creative, the cultural, the heritage with the leisure and things like that. So that's our, that's us. The link with, with GM Active, um, I was involved with GM Active in a previous life. Um, I used to work for Serco and used to speak to Mark Tweedy in the early days when he was at Tameside. Um, so sort of involved, but a little bit from a distance and then got fully involved uh, when, when I joined Link for Life and took over from Gillian Bishop. And the idea with GM Active is really a collaboration of, of like-minded um, operators um, and as we were just discussing, the the the, the uh, strength in some ways of, of GM Active is that we're not overly precious if you're a trust or um, we've got Serco, GLL, um, SLM in there now with, with Insure Forum. Um, it's about serving the people of Greater Manchester, which sounds a bit twee, but that is our focus. And we don't get caught up uh, on the type of operator that we're working uh, alongside. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's really important that that whole locality agenda that you can work on as part of that collaboration is just so powerful. I've been really impressed with with the work that you guys have been doing. We've had a little bit of interaction with you over things like national benchmarking service. But yeah. the reason for, for wanting to talk to you is, yes, I wanted to catch up, but also somebody from FutureFit mentioned some really interesting work that you guys are doing with their learning development platform. Could you share some of that stuff for me, please? Yeah, with pleasure. I mean, just take a step back. Greater Manchester is 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 luckily one of the local pilots. Ten million pounds has gone into uh, getting more more uh, of the inactive active. So there's some some money, if you like, in there. We've also got Greater Manchester as part of the devolution, and mm -hmm. GM Active was was almost born out of the devolution and the desire to link better with health across across um, Greater Manchester. Um, we had been thinking and working towards with a guy called Matt Cleves, who you probably know. Um, uh, Matt's not very well at the moment, unfortunately, but we were working to, to almost replicate the GLL college in, in many ways right. across Greater mm -hmm. Manchester. So we had this vision of creating something and had begun early discussions with FutureFit um, on that basis, using um, and hoping to utilise some of the local pilot money on the workforce development. Um, then COVID hit. Um, so mm -hmm. we quickly changed tack and realized that the digital platform, the ProZone platform that FutureFit uh, had could actually be um, fantastically useful in this period when loads, loads of staff are furloughed. So we've we've gone through the mill a little bit. We um, luckily, although Mac was ill, we managed to get Mark Tweedy um, to come and help us on a short term basis um, linked to SLC, Duncan Wood Allen's uh, consultancy. And he's he's managed to get us over the line in terms of, of um, repurposing some of the local pilot funding mm -hmm. into the FutureFit platform. The platform itself will now be used, populated with um, as much generic content that um, FutureFit and ourselves can put together with NGBs, UK Active and others, uh, and Simspa, um, top of the list. Um, 
alongside anything local that we need. So we're looking to do things like the new uh, well, regulations around the operating models and, and COVID um, secure type, type uh, measurements that we need to take and get that into our staff while they're on furlough and then the different phases of bringing staff back. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a digital platform in which to actually get them up to speed. Um, mm -hmm. And so certain elements of it will be about um, looking after the staff themselves, what we call the team right. resource. There's a team refresh, which is li literally reminding people what work's all about. One mm -hmm. of the issues there is I think, you know, furlough um, can be very tough for people, but it can also yeah. be a bit of a holiday. So mm -hmm. I think the mindset of staff and getting them ready to come back into work is, is the refresh side. And then the reactivate is looking at the, the all the new things. And, and I, I, I'm sure other operators are having calls like we are thinking, oh my crack, there's so much we need to, to A, develop training on and then train our staff and make sure that it's been, they've been trained. Um, mm -hmm. You know, signage and uh, one-way systems will get us so far, but it's the staff that will, will yeah. have to be fully versed on, on, on how the things are going to operate. So we're really pleased we've got that over line and, and now it's a race against time to populate the content and get it out to the staff as quick as we can. Okay, that's really interesting and, and I, I'm sure it will if future fit are involved but the whole empathy agenda is really important here about you know really being empathetic with our customers asking them how we can help before they ask us what we can do giving them confidence that we know what we're doing is fabulous but you guys have also been working with quite a few of your teams haven't you some of those people that maybe fell through the gaps around furlough and stuff like that and, and you've been in, employing people to do things in a different way can you give me a quick yeah. insight into that please Andy yeah yeah sure so so um again the issues that we've all had is that we've all had to sort of create or um uh, really establish the online um, services in particular uh, and yet most of our staff were, were furloughed for very good mm -hmm. reason so what we've we've done in, where we can is either um, release people off furlough to create some videos and, and and do those types of things or there's a volunteer aspect which has been quite clever in some of the way these have been done um, you know one of my instructors I know is, is now into about seven or eight different countries uh, and that's something that's something we need to be very aware of that you know mm -hmm. we tend to operate in our little um, boxes in our in our areas um, but obviously it's, it's boundless uh, boundaryless um, yeah. in terms of the online so so we've been doing that we've also then um, gone back to greater sport who have been fantastic through this whole process of uh, mm -hmm. the, the active partnership um, and again slightly tweaked the the purpose of the local pilot money um to 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 go into this digital space and we've managed to get a little bit of funding which is a bit of an ongoing thing to actually um a pay some instructors which they're very glad of yeah. um some paid work um but actually to 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 again accelerate what we're doing in that space as well to actually make sure that we we're building up this online content working with our self-employed um coaches and i think when the furlough rules relax in august that's going to be great because we can then start to bring them back a little bit part-time and and continue that building up of the online content okay and and you started to indicate that whole piece around reopening which is a very big challenge for all of us i think we, we've, we've got a couple of weeks of grace at the minute before we actually have to start telling people what we're going to do and how we're going to do things. So there's a lot of work to be done in that time. But yeah. I also know through following you on social media and conversations that we've had that, that you are very much a supporter of where Martin Allison is around thinking about actually how do we use this as an opportunity? Um, somebody told me that the word in Japanese for crisis and opportunity is the same word, which yeah. I thought was really interesting. And so how yeah. can we make the most of this opportunity to really get to some of those people that we we don't normally get to what's what's the opportunity the opportunity for gm active and we we've been working along these lines for some time and and without yeah. boring people to death the prehab for cancer um where we've been commissioned um across greater manchester to some significant sums to be honest to actually get our staff that we call the S or i nick them nickname them the sas um they help people get fit for surgery basically and then rehabilitate them after after mm -hmm. cancer surgery um, it's only been commissioned because the evidence exists to say that people um, will have a better um, a standard of life and get out of hospital beds quicker if they're fitter mm -hmm. um, yeah. so we've been working on what's the next iteration of that if you like um, and we've looked at social prescribing we've looked at diabetes and reversal and, and things like that and then covid happened so we think there's an element to build on the pre for cancer and if you combine that with what some of our teams, um, particularly you know, my team in Rochdale, 
uh, at Link for Life and uh, and others in Wigan as well have been very much um, redeploying their staff to work alongside mm -hmm. council um, uh, officers to provide support to the community both in virtual form, telephone form, but also hard copy as well for those that, that, that are digitally uh, suppressed. Um, we just think there's something right now that we need as an industry to look at um, and support those people who need it most. A, if you look at the COVID, can we help people who are still going to be isolated, as Boris has just said, um, to, to be as fit as possible? Um, and also for those that on the rehabilitation side, so those that have got COVID, um, some of our members have had COVID and they are still suffering nine, ten weeks later. Right. So, yeah. you know, we know in our industry that we've got the answer or part answer to a lot of these things, as Dave Stalker was saying to you uh, yeah. yesterday or the day before. Um, you know, we just need to mobilise that now and actually push very, very hard and make sure that this message is heard. We're, we're not something that's just a nice to do. We're essential for people's health and wellbeing and we've got to be better at getting that message over. And Martin Allison is quite right. The proportional universalism is the way forward to support people who need it most. And, you know, now's the time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that whole prehab effectively. So preparing the population to be more resilient. Should we get another COVID, COVID-20 or whatever it's going to be, I think is a really interesting way of doing things because we can ride the back of the chief medical officer. Let's get exercise. You're allowed exercise every day. And then if we can build something that lets people know that actually they're contributing to better health or better health prevention, I think is absolutely fabulous. So how, how does that work though? What, what will it look like? How does it fit into to what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, well, from our point of view, the, the, again, there's various, as you know, as, as um, financial resources are uh, scarce even before this, a lot of the, the old development teams have gone mm. by the by or, or they've gone away, or gone away almost to nothing. So we can't do this alone. And if you take the, the, the pre-ab for cancer, we've got some of our very best staff, the SAS, that have been redeployed and they're commissioned to do this. Right. So yeah. I think it's an element of external commissioning, working with health as, as, mm -hmm. as one, which we need to stop talking about and do, um, mm -hmm. but also redeploying some of the existing money. So whether that's Sport England money, local pilot money, which effectively is mm -hmm. Sport England, whether it's actually some of us that have still got some core funding for development staff, I think we need to repurpose all of that money, put it into mm -hmm. a pot and say, we can make a difference and prevention will pay off. The issue that everybody's always got is, is the, the long-term nature of the, of the return on that investment. But we have yeah. to win that, win that argument now, we really do. No, absolutely. And I think the economy of scale that you guys bring to the table by being GM active, I think is really important. I think Andy Burnham and the, the, you know, his cycling czar and those types of things with the active travel, I think works really well. And, and I think on that, we're actually going to pause and say thank you, Andy, because we've used our time up. Really, really interesting. And, and I'd love to get in contact with you at a later stage and just see how this is going, because it sounds really, really interesting. So, um, Andy, thank Pleasure. you so much. Really good to see you again. Thank you, Dave. All the best. Take care.